the glory to the name of the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time all over the world. Thank you for joining us today. This is going to be Biblical Steps to Overcome from Hero Smarts Ministries. September 2023 uh, session of it. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, awesome opportunity to share your word with this precious people. I'm asking you, Father, for grace and mercy to fill the atmosphere, grace to please you, mercy to overcome in our failures and circumstances. We thank you, Lord, who received this blessing for all of us in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. Welcome, welcome to BSTO for September 2023. We are going to be talking about biblical steps to overcome bad habits. And our punchline scripture is going to be found in Romans chapter 8 and from verse 1 to verse 2. And he goes like, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And that scripture means exactly what it says. It says there is no condemnation for those who belong to the Messiah. So if you've called Yahushua, Jesus, Jesu, Yeshua, whatever name you may call the Lord by, you call him Lord, there is no condemnation for you. What that means is there is no declaring that you are unfit for use right now. There is use for you. There is no condemnation by the grace of God. I don't care what the devil might have used all through the years to tag your testimony. There's no condemnation for you. All right. So there is help in Christ Jesus. What is the help then? Well, the help is going to be sectioned into a couple of nuggets that we are going to be talking about today. We break down this uh, presentation into four major sections. The first part of it is going to be talking about what bad habits are, what negative addictions are. And this presentation is strictly centered around helping people to overcome bad habits because we can see those things prevalent not only in the world but even in the body of Christ right now. Recursive sins, recursive bad habits dug in the heels of people. We want to challenge those kind of paradigms by the grace of God. Why should people come out of, of bad habits? We want to talk about that. The reason people get addicted to start with and the path to and the path out of negative addictions. So we are going to be talking about this presentation based on these four categories of studies. So let's go for it. What are bad habits? Bad habits are addictions. Uh, were depicted in a dictionary as something that is compulsively uh, the state of being compulsively committed to a habit or to a practice or to something that is psychologically or physically habit forming such as narcotics or to such an extent that its cessation causes severe trauma well the dictionary hit on some really good points over there but it's not just narcotics uh, they, at the back of their hearts, they're thinking, well, if you're not addicted to some kind of drug, then you're not really addicted. Well, but the Bible takes a little further. It says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So anybody who falls prey to treason is an addict, so to say. Well, so it doesn't have to be just about drugs. But the reason I put this definition, the uh, dictionary's definition over here, is because it captures the essence of enslavement. And that's the reason you're going to see this kind of graphics over here. You, you see people are in bondage, some kind of shackles. They have hand curves, handcuffs at the back uh, on their hands. They have chains and tying their feet together. Even though they want to get free, they really can't get free from because of the shackles over here. And that's what bad habits predominantly try to do for people. It is enslavement to bad habits. And Romans chapter 6 and verse 16 talks about the same thing as well, which a dictionary talks about. So that's what addictions are. Addictions are enslavement. Hallelujah. But there's a way out. But before we delve into the way out, let's try to find out the reason people get addicted to start with. And... This slide is going to talk about predominantly why we need to come out of it, even before we talk about the reasons people get addicted. Thousands of people die every year because of some kind of a bad habit, and not only drugs alone, but bad habits from, you know, you name it. $600 billion spent every year on treating 
uh, some kind of addiction problem in the United States alone. 56% of divorce cases, this is statistically proven right now, caused by bad habits. Bad habits steal people's peace, shatter aspirations and dreams. The spirit of disobedience in the air causes it, and most importantly, it's going to send people to hell. Why? Because the Bible says over here in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Well, that's the real. We don't want to play with it. We don't want to play with being a coward. We don't want to play with being unbelieving. We do not want to play with being vile. We do not want to play with being immoral. No, we want to get rid of those kind of things in our lives because the Bible says it's a dead end road. But we know that lots of people want to come free, come out of it. Uh, even in the body of Christ, you know, we see this kind of actions going on in the lives of our friends and brothers, and uh, and they they don't know how to come out of it. Some people go to the action of trying. Uh, prescription medications, you know, they go ahead to do therapy and all those kind of things, and it's not helping them. Well, the reason for it is captured in another scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. There is a spirit behind it. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world and the rulers of the kingdom in the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And if you've got a paper copy of the Bible, you're welcome to underline this particular line over there for me. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So that lets us know that disobedience is as a consequence of a spiritual force. And if you're watching with me right now, please type that down for me. Disobedience is as a consequence of spiritual forces or a spiritual force. And what that means is it's going to be as a consequence of certain forces that you cannot see with your five physical senses. You cannot perceive the spirit of disobedience. You can't see that spirit. You can't smell it. You can't touch it. But you can feel the effect of it. And the effect of it is going to be equivalent to disobedience. So what do we need to do? you got to engage in counteracting spiritual strategies to outwit the impact of, of that spiritual force. So type that in for me. Disobedience is a consequence of spiritual forces. And then type another one for me. Engage in counteracting spiritual strategies to overcome it. You want to overcome spiritual forces? Well, it's going to be as a consequence of counteracting spiritual forces. Not physical strategies. It's got to be spiritual forces. So type that in. Engage in counteracting spiritual strategies to overcome the impact of negative spiritual forces. So we're going to delve deeper into these counteracting spiritual strategies, but let's talk about the reason people get addicted to start with. How many people have seen um, a plethora of this chart on the board right now lately? It's called entertainment. From one kind of roller coaster to another roller coaster to video games. To different kinds of things going on in the world just to get people to try to fill the void in their hearts. But entertainment wouldn't fill a void in the human heart. Glory to God. Type that in for me. Entertainment does not fill your void. Glory to God. <laughs> Let's even start from there. So that's what this generation is trying to push. Entertainment, entertainment. And it's such a big industry. And the reason the entertainment industry is so big is because there's a big demand for it. Wow. Type that in for me. There is a big demand for entertainment, but it doesn't solve the problem. Glory to God. Type that in for me. The reason the entertainment industry is so large is because there is a big demand for it. But unfortunately, entertainment is not the answer. The answer is going to be found in the fullness of joy that comes only from God's presence. You know, the law of economics that says that, well, uh, if there is demand, then there's going to be a lot of supply. Well, we can reverse engineer if we see there's a lot of supply of something because there's, it means there's a demand for it. And that's correct. So if there is a plethora, 
an overabundance of entertainment in our generation. It means there's a demand for it. Correct. There's a demand for it. Uh, but unfortunately, the supply is really not answering the deep questions in people's heart hearts. The deep question in people's heart is how do I feel this void of emptiness? And the way to feel that void of emptiness is going to be the joy that comes from God's presence. The fullness of joy that comes from God's presence is the way to feel the void. But unfortunately, people are blind to this truth right now. So they resign themselves to entertainment. And that's the reason 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People are going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power have not, nothing to do with such people so did you see over here everything they're talking about here is in the territory of entertainment it's in the territory of trying to satisfy the void of the human heart with some kind of physical strategy but there is a key problem the problem over here is there is no power of godliness in Lover of money, being a lover of money. Let's, let's slow it down a little bit. Think about this verse of scripture real well. Being boastful. Well, people think when I'm when I'm boastful and I'm braggadocious about what I've got, then I'll be satisfied. But that boast is going to disconnect you from the power of godliness. Being a lover of money is going to disconnect you from the power of godliness. Being proud, being abusive, being disobedient, being ungrateful is going to disconnect you from the power of godliness. Being unholy will disconnect me from the power of godliness. Without love, disconnection from the power of godliness. Unforgiven, disconnection from the power of godliness. Slanderous, disconnection from the power of godliness. Without self-control, disconnects me from the power of godliness. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure in the same way will disconnect me from the power of godliness. So if you're watching with me right now, type as many as you can. There's a lot of things that I just talked about right now. Boast disconnects from the power of godliness. Pride disconnects from the power of godliness. Uh, being unforgiven disconnects you from the power of godliness. Type as many as you can remember. Slander disconnects you from the power of godliness. Lack of self-control disconnects me from the power of godliness. Uh, love for pleasure disconnects me from the power of godliness. Being rash disconnects me from the power of godliness. Being conceited disconnects me from the power of godliness. Type as many as you can remember from this list over here. The list is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. That scripture says anybody who lives in the territory of this thing will be disconnected from the power to be godly. And that lets us know that it takes more than human philosophy to be godly. It takes power, spiritual power, spiritual resources. That's the reason five minutes ago I talked about that to overcome a negative spiritual force, you've got to engage in a positive spiritual force. What's that positive spiritual force called? The power of godliness. But entertainment doesn't have access to that. Entertainment is not going to give you access to the power of godliness. Type that in for me, somebody. Entertainment will not give me access to the power of godliness. And if you want to know the truth about it, it's actually going to deprive you of the power of godliness. <laughs> That's another thing to type out. Physical entertainment deprives me of the power to be godly. Ha! Ah, don't be fooled by entertainment. Believe in the power of godliness. Hallelujah. So that's the reason people get addicted, because they're just going to plunge themselves further down into the territory of ungodliness. Why? Because they're getting themselves exposed to something that is empty. Oh, glory to God. Type that in. Entertainment is empty. 
Unholiness is empty. Boast is empty. Disobedience is empty. Slander is empty. All those things do not have what you require to fill the void on the inside of you. Wow, glory to God. Entertainment does not have what it takes to fill the void on the inside of you. Get your void filled through the power of godliness. Wow. So what's the way out then? Well, the way out is going to be talked about in the scripture that we normally talk about here. It's in Titus chapter 3 and in verse 3. It talks about the way out. But then, before the way out, we got to know the way in. What's the way in? Well, the way in is talked about here. It says, at one time, we two were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved. Did you see there's a process to being enslaved over there? I'm not just going to come from foolishness to being enslaved. No, there's a, there's a path to it. It starts with foolishness, correct? But then after foolishness, there's disobedience. And after disobedience, there's going to be deception. And after deception, there's going to be enslavement, which is what we call addictions. And that's the reason we created this chart over here. It's called FDDA, foolishness, disobedience, deception, and addictions. But thankfully, God has given us some uh, logical way of understanding how to come out of it. And it's going to be the exact opposite of these milestones over here to walk our way out of it. In other words, I didn't get addicted overnight. I am not going to overcome addictions overnight. There is a way to come out of it. And the way it starts with repentance. Hallelujah. And then it's going to graduate to truth. And then to obedience. And then to wisdom. We call it the Arto strategy. And that's the reason we have... The graphic of a truck trying to tow a car away over here just to strike that chord in people's minds it's the rtow strategy which is the path out of addictions so the power of godliness that we started talking about five minutes ago type that in for me is going to be equivalent to rtow that will connect me to the power of godliness so if entertainment is not going to connect with the power of godliness and uh, slander is not going to connect with the power of godliness, disobedience is not going to connect me to the power of godliness, then what connects me to the power of godliness? It's going to be encapsulated in the R2 strategy. Repentance, truth, obedience, and wisdom. You keep doing that. Repentance, truth, obedience, wisdom. Repentance, truth, obedience. You do it cyclically. It will connect you to the power of godliness that will overcome whatever bad habit or anything in between over there. So, what's the way in in detail? Well, we talked about foolishness, disobedience, deception, and addiction. And foolishness does not necessarily mean sin, but it means a life of no structure. The opposite of wisdom. And people leave their lives in this territory all day long, and they wonder why they fall into treason. They don't put guardrails around their lives. Foolishness is going to be a life of no guardrails. I just want to do whatever comes down the pike. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> Type that in. No guardrails equivalent to trouble in capital letters. Type that in front of me. Oh, but I haven't fallen into trouble just yet. Well, you are going to be trouble in the making. You live your life without any principles. There, there are no guardrails around you. You are going to be big time trouble to yourself, to everybody in your world. No guardrails, capital letters equivalent to T R O U B L E. Trouble. <laughs> it's called disobedience and treason. And then people stay in it. They're gonna, of course. Deception is going to be associated with disobedience, which will be stronghold of lives, which tries to reinforce the condition of disobedience in people's lives. And when that condition is reinforced significantly, their state becomes habitual treason right now, which is what, what addictions are. That's the way in. It's not rocket science, but it just takes you slowing down to think a little bit. It's called FDDA. I praise the name of the Lord for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. There's a way out. The way out is going to be captured in the strategy we talked about, RTOW, which is repentance, truth, 
obedience and wisdom. Hallelujah. Well, the way starts with repentance, which is making a U-turn. Which if you're stumbling on this message right now, this is where you are by the grace of God, you're making a U-turn. You say, well, God, I want to make a change over here. Well, that's repentance. Father, please forgive me. You're over here. But we're not going to stop our repentance. We want to graduate right now to the second milestone, which is going to be overcoming deception with the truth of the Word of God. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to go to obedience. And we're not going to stop at that. We're going to stop putting guardrails around our lives right now. It's called wisdom. We're not just going to do everything that comes down the pike. you got to be wise. Well... <laughs> What's the detail of the way in? Foolishness. This graphic talks about what foolishness is. Pretty much like what Adam and Eve were doing in the Garden of Eden. They were just acting like a fool or acting like fools. Uh, enjoying the beauty of, beauty of God's creation without necessarily putting some guardrails around their lives. Pretty much like children. Uh, and the result and effect of that is going to be disobedience. It's just a question of time. You stay long enough in foolishness, you are going to fall into trees and type that in for me. <laughs> you can't help it. Oh, but I've never fallen into trees and I've been just uh, hanging out and uh, I don't have God rails around me. Uh, I, it's just a question of time. Stay long without God rails and you will fall into trees. Type that in if you're watching me right now. You stay long enough in it. It's just a question of time. Because the more you stay in the territory of foolishness without guardrails, the more you get deprived of spiritual energy. Oh, glory to God. Type that in for me. The more I stay in the territory of no guardrails, the more I get deprived of spiritual energy. The power of godliness. I'm bleeding life. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> You stay in the territory of no guardrails, you're bleeding life away. Type that in for me. That's a very powerful, strong statement. Just like somebody who has a wound that is not treated, and then the blood keeps on flowing out of it. Blood keeps on flowing out of it. And it, it's like the person like, well, uh, I'm not dead yet, even though I'm just bleeding. <laughs> In a question of minutes, you're going to die. I mean, can't you see blood is flowing away from you? Ah, oh, no, not a problem. It's just a little blood. I'm bleeding, but nothing's going to happen. No, you're going to die spiritually. Don't you understand? You're bleeding life away. There's no God rails right now. You're getting disconnected from the power of godliness. You're going to fall into treason. The wages of sin is death. You're going to die. Can't you see? Oh, no, I'm not dead yet. I'm just having fun. No. <laughs> can you see how this is working right now you don't want to stay in the territory of no god rails you're going to be bleeding like that spiritually bleeding life away just dissipating energy in that mode people fall into treason mm. and when that happens the treason doesn't just stop because the devil is going to jump over there and attach a deception to that treason why? Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So did you see over there that sin doesn't just stop at being sin? There is deception associated with it. Ooh, correct. And the purpose of that deception is to reinforce a condition of treason again. That's the reason we call it the stronghold of lies. It's actually strongholds. There are multiple strongholds that come attendants to treason. It's called deception. Mm. How do we overcome that? Well, the book of Hebrews says, encourage one another every day. Well, that's what we're trying to do right now in BSD. Oh, well, we do BSD every month. Uh, that's not good enough. Well, we've got resources that you can use to encourage yourself every day. If you connect with us, we're going to share with you. Uh, it's called Discipleship Program of the ODP, which is publicly available. It's on demand. You can get encouragement every day from it. That's the way not to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Encouragement in the truth every day. Type that in for me. Encouragement from truth 
ever with the truth of the word of God every day will overcome the hardness of sin. Encouragement with the truth of the word of God daily, daily. You're getting fed daily, daily. It will break the hardness of sin as a consequence of deception or treason over there. Type that in for me. Wow. And that's the reason if people don't do it, they become addicted right now. There are no guardrails anymore. And it's like a whirlpool. You see over there, a, a, a pool of water, a whirlpool is not just like a stank, stagnant pool of water. It's a pool of water that swirls around. And if you jump into it, you can't come out. <laughs> You're going to need something to take you out of there, maybe like a forklift or something like that. Well, that's what addictions are. Well, how do we get out then? It's called Arto. It starts with repentance. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5 says, Consider how far you've fallen. Repent. Do the things you did at first. You can repent. Oh, but I thought I repented when I got born again. Correct? Well, but if you've fallen away from grace, you got to repent again. That's the reason this scripture was written over here. Lukewarm gospel is going to tell you, well, you don't need to repent. You just repent once and then that's it. No, if you fall... You got to repent again. <laughs> repent. Do the things you did at first. That's what Jesus tells us. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Oh, but repentance in Greek just means a change of the mind. Actually, it just means, a, it means uh, uh, metanoia. It's not coming out with all this funky revelation. A change of mind which doesn't lead to a change of conduct is useless. Type that in for me. No. Stop being fooled by lying spirits. Repentance is repentance. It means a change of mind, a change of will, a change of emotions, a change of conduct. you got to change and ultimately <laughs> realize a change of actions. Don't be fooled by Luke and gospel telling you, well, so long as my mind is changed right now, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to change my conduct. Hogwash. Nonsense. Don't believe that nonsense. A change of mind should lead to a change of conduct. Hallelujah. Oh, how do I do then? Well, 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess and forsake, he is going to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, believe that scripture. Turn to it. Hebrews chapter 9, in verse, verse 13 and 14. If the blood of bulls and goats could purge the flesh of those who offered it, how much more shall the blood of Christ purge our consciences from dead works so that we can serve the living God? You're going to plead the blood of Jesus. Father God, please forgive me. I plead the blood to cleanse my conscience. And God is going to be faithful. You're going to see right now, guilt disappears from your conscience. Even if you were to do it 490 times in a day, God's going to forgive you. Because that's his standard and expectation for all of us based on what Jesus talked about in the Gospels. 70 times 7. Forgive your brother. That's what Jesus said. Well, if Jesus said that, it means that he can do the same thing for you if you were to go to him. 70 times 7 in a day. He can. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. It says, He will cover his sins, shall not prosper, but he will forsakes, confesses and forsakes, shall obtain mercy. You want mercy if you've fallen from grace. The way to do it is not to cover it up. The way to do it is not to give excuses. Type that in for me. Do not give excuse. Repent from sin hallelujah so how do i do it well again it's going to be first john 1 9 hebrews 9 13 to 14 proverbs proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 somebody type those scriptures in and call them repentance pills that's going to be repentance pills over there first john 1 9 hebrews 9 13 to 14 proverbs chapter 28 to verse 13 repentance pills you can take those pills in less than 30 seconds and be back on the path of life. Hallelujah. Type that in for me. Repentance peels. 1 John 1, 9. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Less than 30 seconds. Get rid of it. Why are we saying 30 seconds? Well, you all know better than that. You don't want to die with a conditional treason in your heart. That can send somebody to hell. So we don't want to play with it. Less than 30 seconds. Take your peel of repentance. If the Father, the Holy Spirit, is convicting you of a certain sin, get rid of it in less than 30 seconds. Hallelujah. But we're not going to stop our repentance. We want to graduate right now to truth. And the reason for that is, if I do not graduate to truth, I'm going to need to repent again. 
next week or two weeks or four weeks or five weeks or two months down the road. Why? Because I still believe a lie. Why? The Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 32, you will know the truth. The truth is going to set you free. Did you see over here that repentance is not going to set me free? What sets me free is knowing the truth. Can you see that? Type that in for me. Repentance is good, but it doesn't set free. What sets free is knowing the truth. And put John chapter 8 from verse 32 over there. You have a copy of the Bible? Go to John chapter 8 and turn over there and just read it by yourself. These are not just hero smart revelation right now. This is these are the words of the one you call Jesus, Lord. It says you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. You have to know the truth. What's the meaning of that? Well, the truth is going to be the exact opposite of deception. Because all through the years of practicing addiction and bad habits and rebellion against God, the deceitfulness of sin is attaching deceptions to my heart. So I've got to get counteracting truth nuggets to set me free. And that's the reason this chart is going to be important. Lie is going to be equivalent to truth plus distortion. If I eliminate distortion from this equation, I can retrieve the truth. Truth is going to be equivalent to lie minus distortion. What does that mean? Well, there are prevalent lies in this generation which sound logically true, but they have distortions to them. So what are we going to do to retrieve truths from these lies? I'm going to firstly identify distortion, eliminate distortion from our belief system, and I am going to go to retrieve the truth as a consequence of that exercise. Well, so look at this first nugget over here, which is simply calling Jesus Lord is going to take me to heaven. Well, how many people have heard that before? I've heard of it. We, we still hear of it. Oh, just say Jesus, and you're going to you're going to be in heaven. Where well, you're going to go to heaven? Well, that sounds sounds cool and cute. But the problem over there is the word simply over here. Because the word simply makes this statement a lie. Why? Because Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, simply calling Jesus Lord, <laughs> uh, what it takes to heaven is not simply calling Jesus Lord. It says, it's not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who live to please my Father. That's why Yahushua said, so that means that calling Jesus Lord is important, calling Yahushua Lord is important, but more than that, I've got to be leaving to please the Father to go to heaven. Now, when I believe this lie, when I believe this truth, I have eliminated the lie distortion of simply. And in this mode of believing that, well, I gotta call Jesus Lord, but at the same time, I gotta believe to please the Father if I want to go to heaven. <laughs> if I don't do that, I'm gonna burn in hell. <laughs> Oh, that's a curse word. No, that's the truth that's going to set you free. That's not a curse word. <laughs> Matthew 17, Matthew 7 from verse 21 is not a curse. Type that in for me. It's the truth that will set you free. Oh, what does he say? Well, turn to the Bible, read it by yourself. Type that in for me. Matthew 7, 21 to 23 is not a curse. It is the truth that will set me free believe it believe it believe it Matthew 7 21 to 23 the same scripture is talked about the same same sense is talked about in Luke chapter 6 and verse 46 what's the point of calling me Lord Lord well you're not going to do what I've told you to do I tell you to sit down you want to get up I tell you to get up you want to sit down I tell you to stop you want to go I tell you to go you want to stop in that mood they're going to go to hell Oh, but I say Jesus Lord. No, that's not what you're saying. <laughs> Calling Jesus Lord is not just a mouth experience. It is an actions experience as well, by the grace of God. So that's how we can cancel this lie. And another lie that the devil tries to use to fool people is, tests and trials will last forever. That's a lie. Why? Because you got patience in you. And with the patience in you, you can outlast tests and trials. Another lie is yielding to the pressure will make you stop. Now that looks like, well, it's going to be true because when I yielded last week, the pressure stopped. But then the, the problem with that is 
I'm facing bigger pressure right now today because I yielded last week. And just like we said a few months ago, yielding to pressure is going to be equivalent to bigger pressure. To be permanently free, you got to overcome pressure. Type that in for me. So yielding to pressure is not going to work. It's a lie. I want to get freedom. Well, the way I'm going to get freedom, the Bible says, submit to the Lord, then resist the devil and he's going to flee away from you. That's the way to get freedom. It's in James chapter 4, verse 7. Isaiah chapter chapter 48, verse 22. There is no peace for the wicked. So when I choose to team up with the devil, I'm acting like a wicked person over there. There's not going to be any peace for me in that mode. So I'm not going to get free permanently from pressure. The way I'm going to get free permanent, permanently from pressure is to overcome pressure. How do we do that? It's called the wisdom of the righteous. It's called grace and mercy. You're going to ask God for grace in a time of pressure, and you will overcome pressure. Type that in for me. Ask for grace and mercy in a time of pressure to overcome pressure. Hallelujah. Type that in. Ask for grace and mercy in a time of pressure to overcome pressure. You're not going to overcome pressure by yielding to pressure. No, 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 no. That's going to be bigger pressure for your, for your tomorrow. But in the moment of pressure, ask for grace. Just say, Father, give me grace. Give me mercy. We're going to talk about that in detail. That's how to overcome pressure. But please type it in right now. Ask for grace and mercy to overcome pressure. Another lie is the blood of Jesus will completely undo the effect of a past misdeed. That looks like a cute Sunday school, <laughs> Sunday school rhyme, but it's not completely true. Why? Because there's a distortion over there. The distortion here is completely. The blood of Jesus was not designed, number one, to give you an inheritance that you lost the glory that I traded when I fell into treason, the blood of Jesus is not going to give me that back. What's going to give me that back is overcoming pressure. The blood of Jesus is not going to give you uh, eliminate afflictions from your circumstances. So there are certain things the blood of Jesus can do. The blood of Yahushua, what does it do? Exactly what the Bible says in Hebrews 9 is going to remove guilt from my conscience. And that's important because it gives you an opportunity to start getting access to spiritual energy again, which will position you to pass the test so you can get your inheritance back, so you can eliminate afflictions from your circumstances. But this complete knowledge is important because that's the truth that's going to set me free. <laughs> so the truth is, i got to repent for the blood of Jesus to re remove guilt from my spirit. I've got to pass repeats of the tests to remove afflictions from my circumstances. I've got to pass repeats of the test to inherit my glory back. Well, that's the truth of the Word of God over here, which will cancel the lies that people hold to so dearly. Oh, well, the truth is not completely exhaustive then. How do I know? Well, that's understandable. Well, there's somebody called the Holy Spirit. He knows the lie you believe. And if you go to the Holy Spirit and start asking him, please tell me, what lie do I believe in the situation that makes the situation recursive in my experience? You ask the Holy Spirit like that, he's going to tell you. And the beauty of it is, when the Holy Spirit tells you, he's going to give you the truth to counter that lie. He is the truth manufacturer. Type that in for me, somebody. The Holy Spirit specializes in manufacturing truth. The devil specializes in manufacturing lies. Stay connected to the Holy Spirit and you will get fresh updates of truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Stay connected to the Holy Spirit for fresh updates of truths. Because the devil is going to come tell you another lie tomorrow. Oh, but I wish the devil doesn't speak to me. I wish he doesn't just tell me lies. Well, the time is going to come when the devil is not going to be able to speak anymore. And that time is going to come in Revelation chapter 20, during shortly before the millennial reign of Christ. But unfortunately, we're not there just yet. No, no, no. The devil is not locked up in the bottomless pit just yet. He's going to tell you a lie tomorrow. He's going to tell you a lie next week. That you, you might as, 
might as well just believe that the devil is going to tell me a lie today. Settle that in your heart. Oh, but I'm going to exercise faith so the devil doesn't tell me lies. Well, there are certain things you can do to pipe up the operation of the demonic. It's called incense. You, you, you surround your atmosphere with incense predominantly. And if you stay in that bubble, the devil can't talk to you. But what about if some Peters were to come into your world? <laughs> what we mean by that is some people that don't have incense, they're going to come into your world. They're going to be mouthpieces for the devil, for the devil's lies. Well, in that mode, you got to stay connected to the Holy Spirit, man. The Holy Spirit is going to, it's going to tell you, well, the devil said this, but then this is the truth of the Word of God. That's the reason this is important. You got to stay tightly connected to the truth. And of course, for the most part, if you're a part of this ministry, you have what it takes to mitigate an abundance of lies in your mind to start with. It's called incense. Glory to God. Spiritual incense. You, you get connected with us. We're going to give you certain resources that's going to make that uh, really challenging for the devil to talk to you extensively. But if he talks to you, find a way to get fresh updates from the Holy Spirit. So that's milestone number two. It's going to be really important. The truth milestone. The truth of the Word of God right now is going to position you to obey the Word in a time of testing. But this milestone is still important because you got to obey right now so that obedience can become easier. Type that in for me. Obey so that obedience can become easier. <laughs> if you do not do this step, it's going to become more difficult, more difficult, more difficult. Somebody make a song about that. Disobedience becomes more difficult, more difficult. <laughs> but you got to obey the word of God so it can become easier and easier and easier. Make a song about that. Oh, what am I going to do then when the pressure of disobedience is on me? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of favor with faith so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Oh, so I'm not alone in my moment of pressure. Type that in for me, somebody. Glory to God. Oh, but I thought I'm just alone. No, you're not. Grace is with you. Mercy is with you. God's favor is with you. Oh, but I, I come, I don't see. It's because you don't ask. Type that in for me. You're not alone in a moment of pressure. You have access to grace, access to mercy, access to the favor of God from the throne of God. Get connected by asking for it. Oh, is that really simple? Correct. You can even ask at a thought level. Say, Father, please give me grace to overcome this pressure. Give me mercy to overcome this pressure. Ask for it. Ask for grace. Ask for mercy. To your amazement. That spiritual energy is going to be there for you. That's the power to be godly. That's what we're talking about. This is not prescription medication writing, in, writing here. This is not therapy. This is spiritual power. This is the power to be godly, guys. This, this is not rocket science. You just need to do it by the books. Do it by the manual of the person who created you. His name is God. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come die for you. He, and he's, he sent his Holy Spirit to come teach you how to do this thing. It's called spiritual energy. How do you get access to that? Grace and mercy in your time of pressure. And the more you do this, the easier it is you become obedient. And just like you can train a dog to be obedient, you can train your body to be obedient. You can train your mind to be obedient. You can train your will to be obedient. You can train your emotions to be obedient. So rather than my emotions getting inflated with the pride of life and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the, lust of the eyes. No, you are the spirit. You tame your emotions right now. Hallelujah. That inflated pride in you, the inflated disobedience in you, dishonesty, the pride of life, the lust of flesh, all of those things, they are going to be tamed by the force of spiritual powers which comes to you with grace and mercy and all of that is for your asking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Type that in for me. All of that is for your asking. Grace is for your asking. Mercy is for your asking. God's waiting on you. Will you ask? In your moment of pressure, I'll be there with you. 
All right, so that's milestone number three, but we're not even going to stop at that. We're going to go journey right now to the wisdom milestone, which is milestone number four. So there may be any, not there may not be any pressure on me, and that's fine. But when there's no pressure on you, that's the time right now for you to build your house. Don't wait for pressure before you try to build your house. Build your house before the storm comes on you. That's called wisdom. Type that in for me. Wisdom will build a house before the storm. Wisdom is going to put guardrails in place before the pressure comes on you. Wisdom is going to put all the guardrails in you before the temptation comes, before the pressure comes. But foolishness, what does it do? No guardrails. It tears down the house. <laughs> foolishness is going to tear down your house. Wisdom builds the house for you and do all that before the storm comes on you. Hallelujah. You don't want to wait for pressure to come on you before you know, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, what am I? No. In a moment of no pressure, you got to build your house of guardrails. Type that in for me. Why are we saying that? Well, because of Luke chapter 1 and verse 17. It says the disobedient needs to be turned to the wisdom of the righteous. Well, what's the wisdom? Man? How do I get that wisdom? Well, we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel. We're going to go to the person who's been the most right for the Father. His name is Yahushu. We're going to go right now on bended knees without any pride and arrogance. Say, Jesus, how do you do this thing? Come teach me. And incidentally, he gives us an invitation to come learn from him. The invitation is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. It says, come and learn from him. If we were some, somebody who was trying to get a Nobel Peace Prize, it's not going to give you an invitation. Yahushua is not, is not trying to get Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize. He gives you an invitation. Come learn of him. So why don't you take the Lord at his words? Go learn from the master. Hallelujah. That is the wisdom to build your house before the storm. Learn from the master. Hallelujah. Oh, but I don't know where to get started. Well, fortunately for you in 2023, some people have done that. And they've created something called the ODP, which you can start with. It's called the HMODP. It's called He Respond Online Discipleship Program. It's a collection of messages which are packed full of wisdom strategies. How do I get access to that? Well, you're going to go to youtube.com slash He Smart. You click on that link. It's going to bring you over here to the YouTube channel. You're going to see it right over there. And then you scroll to the YouTube channel. You're going to see something called the ODP Online Discipleship Program. You're welcome to click on any of those playlists over there. And they're going to bring you wisdom strategies one step after another. And there is actually a better way for you to do that. The better way for you to do that is to go directly to our website. It's called HeroSmart.com. And then you're going to go to the menu section. You're going to type in, click on Church HeroSmart. You're going to go to Watch Sermons. You click on Watch Sermons. You're going to select week number one. Select the sermon. And you're going to see all these messages on YouTube. But right now, with study notes. You're going to see study notes over there that you can use to study along as you listen to the message directly from the website. And then, you're going to start seeing something called hashtag church at Hero Smart, which if you click on it, it's going to take you to our Facebook page, which is a collection of all messages, like little summaries of messages and all of that. And then you get access to it directly from the website over there. Why would you take advantage of it? What's this called? It's called wisdom. Wisdom to be right. Some people have gone ahead. They put all these things together. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of money. We spent money to put these resources together. All for the purpose of trying to help you to steer away from the clutches of negative addictions. This is biblical steps to overcome negative habits or bad habits by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Did you get something from it? Well, this recording is going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel. And if you connect with us, we can share with you additional resources by the grace of God. And for the guys that, that are part of the live session, they get additional an additional benefit to come share and fellowship later. And if you want to be a part of that experience, we're going to invite you to go to our website again. 
you're going to see register for the next BSTO. You go to the website, you scroll down just a little bit. Uh, you are going to be able to register to BSTO right now. You click on register to BSTO. It's going to take you over there. You can register on our website by the grace of God just like that for you. Uh, and we are going to call you every month just like this to be a part of the live session by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and pray and close the service. Heavenly Father, we give a thanks for another awesome opportunity in your word. I'm asking you, Father God, for the people that are connecting with us that will stumble on this on this resource. Father, I'm asking you for mercy for them, O Lord. Show mercy. Give them grace in their hearts, mercy in their circumstances, to overcome whatever the devil might have used all through the years to dog your testimony in their lives. Satan, I take authority over you. I say you you let these people go right now. Leave them alone. Whatever may be the, the deception attached to their wheels, I curse that deception right now. Let the lights of life shine on you. Be free. Be free. Be free in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, amen, friends and families all over the world. Thank you for studying with us today. We love you. God loves you. And remember, Yahushua is Lord. Stay blessed and see you on the fellowship call.